This meeting is being recorded. Got it. Great. Success. Let's make you big. Close. Um, I had an idea. Okay. Um, I thought my English is quite bad, so uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> no, I've put together a lot of uh, pictures. Okay. And we can uh, go through it. And then when the questions come, please. Um, yeah. Ask. Yeah. I ask. Yeah. Okay. Would be great. So don't hesitate. Hi. Hi. Are we? Yes, please turn the lights off. Ah, yeah, for better colors. Mm -hmm. oh, ah, right. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everyone, Selma Drunkers. Selma Drunkers. The, uh, the, what is it? Dual enrollment art class of St. Louis Catholic High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Welcome and thank you uh, for joining our art chat series. <laughs> thank you. Um, I uh, put uh, together some pictures and um, the story starts uh, years ago. Uh, and you can ask any question you want. You can interrupt or it's not interrupting. Um, because I thought if we see picture, pictures that makes the talking um, and chatting easier. So I will share my screen. Everybody's still there? Yeah, inspiration, society, family. we're good. Okay. When I was uh, still on Art Academy and um, short uh, after that, um, I think most of the students, their inspirations um, are society, family life, their own life, or it has to do with society. And in that time, uh, the 70s, 80s, um, it was, uh, my education has been very er experimental and I love that. Uh -huh. what? Yes, it works. What? So I did, per I did performances. And here you can see already that textile played, uh, yeah, quite a big role in my work. And that, this, yeah. That, that's uh, you? This is, a, this is a real person? This isn't a mannequin, this is you? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> that's All <me>. right. <laughs> and uh, maybe you see um, uh, more a skin uh, color, a part, uh -huh. a, small, a small part. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where more or less your heart is. And it was about uh, connection. So the performance uh, was, um, I was in the public and asked if they uh, would like to make connection by laying their hands on my heart. Yeah, it was tricky. Um, I worked with my own hair, uh, wool, uh, this is about family life. Maybe you recognize something, maybe not at all. Uh, do you see the metal threads mm -hmm. or wires? So uh, at that time, I thought, and maybe it's true, I don't know, that um, a family uh, has a story and every child um, carries something of, of this story in her or his life. Uh, it was uh, heavy stuff. In the Netherlands, a lot of young people who live in the villages, 
uh, gather in a kind of barn and they drink quite a lot. It's still uh, the same. But um, after a few years, um, I felt that uh, my work didn't have really roots. So it was experimental, great. Uh, I had a great time. I was a rebel. I didn't think about uh, the future, but I missed something. And in those times, it was not uh, quite a fashion um, that you were able to draw, for instance, a horse or a landscape or a still life. So uh, years and years later, maybe you have seen it on Instagram already. Uh, I went to an art academy um, where you uh, only were drawing and painting uh, from life. And I really loved making uh, portraits. It's all uh, a life painting. And I love oil paint. And um, this is painted uh, outside. And here you maybe can see that uh, some ab abstraction is already there. It is simplified. Mm -hmm. A landscape, it was real, but it is simplified by me, or at least I saw it like this. Uh, when I was on this art academy, um, where I drew from uh, life a lot or always. Um, then it became more clear to me how important a uh, light situation is. If there is light or not, it doesn't matter. This is in real life, of course. I love the the abstraction in this uh, picture. And I don't know what you see here, because there's a lot to see, I think. Um, may I ask you, for instance, what is important in this picture for you? You can also say nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. For instance, Uh huh. And is there anybody who loves people? Because here, the left uh, top corner, there are people, or who loves cars, he or she will see only the car. But for me, it's about light. And you can find these situations anywhere, in the street, in your room. Is that a drawing, Selma? Yeah. Do you know uh, that technique? It's uh, from your childhood. Um, you make a piece of paper totally black and then oh, you, yeah. are, um, you can scratch. You can yeah. scratch it off. I did that in uh, this uh, drawing. So I brought back the light in a way. Um, what I loved also is, um, how do you call these places? Uh, building sites. Because um, those buildings are in transition and I love uh, to be in places uh, which are in transition. So the, the, the buildings that are being built or in de decline? Both. Okay. Yeah. Or transformed. Yeah. Yeah. More and more I began to... Um, to search for more, even more simplicity. So this is also about, about light. I hope that is clear. 
and a little bit of color. So I reduced the amount of, um, of shapes. And really, if you, if you know where this is, maybe you, you don't see the beauty because it was a rubbish over there. It wasn't beautiful at all, but the light made it beautiful. Um, I'm educated uh, in two fields. It's uh, textile as an art form, a form of art, and uh, drawing and uh, painting. So the material itself, uh, the, uh, the characters, the character is very, very important. And what can I do with it? And can I handle it? And this is, do you know, Yupo? Uh, uh, it is, um, is that uh, the right word? Polypropylene? It's um, a kind of plastic. Okay. Because I was looking for um, as much saturation as I could find. So first I uh, used um, uh, aquarelle paper. But um, the the color was sucked in, or how do you, yeah? The, is that yeah, the right yeah. word? Yeah. Um, so there didn't come uh, anything back to the viewer. So uh, that's why uh, I use this uh, polypropylene, this plastic, because uh, the water um, evaporated, and the pigment state uh, it's, you made the mark on on the plastic or the plastic is the blue no no okay okay the plastic is white okay and the pigment is ultramarine blue okay yeah okay. And, and and i yeah what's what what's the scale of this um from 20 uh, 20 okay. centimeters. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. um, till one meter by one, one, one square meter. Okay. But the bigger, the more difficult it is because the water um, evaporates quite early. So the circle doesn't become uh, bigger than this. Here I, I uh, was uh, researching. Uh, first, I had uh, the black and white painting. So it was abstract. It didn't uh, um, tell anything uh, about uh, real life, reality. But I wanted to uh, re research, do a little research on uh, what uh, happens uh, to the picture and the meaning of the picture if I put a pear or whatever. This is the same ink as uh, the ultramarine blue, the from um, its airbrush ink. And I wanted to know um, what would happen um, on the borders of the two colors. This is not uh, something uh, I had in mind, but it happened. It's not uh, chronologically, so okay. uh, the space in between, uh, some, some of you call it a negative space, I think. Um, yeah. I find it very interesting 
uh, because those shapes uh, do not have a name. For instance, I cannot call it a flower or a house or a chair. Um, and those spaces and those shapes are always different. And that made me curious. So um, I took a lot of uh, pictures in nature. And uh, before this, I uh, had already, I was educated already. I was in the art academy already for uh, four years. So I have uh, been drawing, drawing from life, plants, uh, architecture, everything. And maybe you can see it, um, that the uh, little dark shapes, um, I wanted to make them a little bit, bit more black because uh, you see them slightly better. And what I find also very exciting was uh, what can I do with uh, the tone? So how, with the lights and the darks, when they are very um, close together, so only grays, uh, I also find it uh, exciting. It doesn't have to be always like this. This is, so uh, yeah. Did you, uh, did you, were you working from photographs or memory or, um, or did, did you, uh, were you making it up at, at, at times? Good question. Um, I relied on my um, experience in drawing from life. Mm -hmm. So I took uh, pictures, but bad pictures and only black and white and a bit grayish. Okay. So not as clear as it is here because I want to have uh, the room or the, the highest amount of possibilities to mm -hmm. choose my shapes. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, I'm making a composition mm -hmm. and not more than that. Uh, there the do you know the Posca markers and the Molotov markers? Mm -hmm. I do. Yes, it's this paint marker. I used uh, paint marker, paint markers um, to draw shapes. So I didn't paint this. I did it with a marker, and that cost a hell of a lot uh, of time. Um, but I feel more free um, to change the shapes because it must, it's not about copying, but it's about making a new uh, composition. This comes also from nature. And when I uh, sold it, um, the new owner said, but uh, it's, um, I see a cat. So I thought, oh no, I didn't mean to do it, <laughs> draw a cat. Yeah. But do you see it? Mm, no. You gotta see a cat? Yeah. Wait, where do you see a cat, Emma? Oh, go point to it. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Do you see it um, uh, more or less the left on the left side at the top? Or do you see another uh, animal? <laughs> uh, I see like a tiger. A tiger. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I guess we can convince ourselves to start seeing it, but uh, yeah. I, at first, no. And I don't enjoy looking for cats. So. No, so no. maybe <laughs> maybe the the woman did. <laughs> right, maybe loved cats. <laughs> right. Uh, this is all uh, graphite. 
here I used um, an eraser mm -hmm. because uh, I see the eraser as just a tool to make my uh, composition. And it's really funny. Um, do you know this electric uh, on a battery eraser? What? Uh, yeah, you can can get can buy these erasers uh, which work on uh, and better with a battery. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's um yeah I think it uh, it has been created for uh, hobbyists for certain techniques. So first I didn't want to use it, but it's great because you, your paper becomes white again. This the inspiration from life. Just an ordinary corner of a, um, no, it's not, you can't, can't call it a garden because it was along the street. So nothing special. But for me, it's special because of the shapes. Here you can see a lot of negative space. This is um, 70 by 70 centimeters. Also done with a marker. And I began to use blue that had a, that, uh, had a reason. I wanted to um, not to use color in that time, um, but I see this blue as uh, a tone, so it's dark. It's not as dark, this blue is not as dark as the black, but still I found that um, for me, it had a completely different meaning if I, uh, draw it in uh, with black markers or with blue markers. Is it for you the same, black or blue? For instance, this drawing in black or blue? Is there a difference for you guys from black to blue? No. Yeah. What do you prefer? Yeah. Why do you like the blue though? It's happier. It's more lively and the black is just like. Okay. Uh huh. Mm hmm it's more lively mm -hmm. well and i i think it's interesting because i see this one uh having I, I like the blue as well but i like it because this one seems to have so much more depth than than the black the black and white is, is yeah. a, a very flat you know yeah and yeah. And, and the tone the tone doesn't even seem to really change on the blue so uh, maybe it's because of those other things that it, it's more it's more of an invitation to investigate than yeah. it is just an exercise in composition. Yeah, yeah. I was working already with abstraction because I looked only at uh, negative spaces, the negative shapes. And uh, still, light was very important, and light on architecture is so beautiful. And of course, the shapes are more clear than on plants. So it's very the shapes are very well defined. Defined. <laughs> This is one meter, those two, one meter by 70 centimeters. This is the start of a new drawing. So you can see how I start. Not always. It's quite gray and I used the eraser and mostly um, a very soft uh, graphite pencil to build up the layers. 
this was a very important uh, drawing for me um, because after this one, I tried to make uh, more drawings uh, uh, around this uh, theme, uh, plants, and uh, then drawing the negative shapes. But um, how can I explain? Um, I didn't stop, but the drawings, um, yeah, it just, the drawings, uh, this series ended because it, the, it uh, ended. So the harder I tried to draw more uh, negative spaces between plants, I didn't succeed anymore. And that was a very strange uh, experience that I wanted to draw, draw something and I didn't succeed. So that was the moment uh, that it was clear to me uh, that I should only um, draw or paint or whatever um, abstract drawings. This is a bit of an inspiration from more or less daily life. Abstraction of the light and the dark shapes on the water surface. And water, I found water even more interesting because it has almost never uh, the same shape, the lights and the darks or the shapes of the waves. Light in my studio. It's also light in my studio, totally natural. This is a street around the corner and you can find beautiful things in daily life. This, according to me, this is not special or beautiful, but if you um, are uh, on the spot on, in, on the right time, then you can see this. I didn't manipula manipulate anything, just with the uh, iPhone. This was a boat trip in the Netherlands. Also abstraction in daily life. I didn't know if vastness was uh, the right word. It, that, it seems to fit so far. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, I would say this is very vast. Okay. <laughs> Uh, being um, at sea, yeah, you you read it, you all read it already in, in uh, on my website that it's very hard when the circumstances are a bit uh, humid, then you can't see uh, the horizon anymore, and you can't um, you cannot see anything sharp. So no sharpness, nowhere. And first that gave me a very, yeah, I didn't feel, feel comfortable because there wasn't anything uh, clear. But later um, I experienced uh, freedom, to be honest. We had a very small boat, uh, 26 foot. Uh, do you know how much, uh, how many meters that is? It's, uh, it's seven and a half meters, so that's not big. Yeah. No, whenever we were reading your, uh, uh, and, and we said 26 uh, foot, there were, there were several gasps in the room about the smallness of, of the boat and the travel. Um, 
three and a half bed length. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, water is uh, always close to me or has, has been always close to me or the other way around. I've always been uh, living close to water. This is the river and the water is very high. I've been living in uh, Hungary also. It's also in Europe, Eastern Europe, always uh, near a river. This is also water. We had to uh, be quick because uh, it became a very, very bad uh, weather. I didn't believe this was true, but it is. <laughs> All pictures are made by myself. Mm, and after the first few years uh, traveling uh, by boat, um, I didn't want to represent uh, the situation of feeling lost a bit because uh, of the void. Um, but I uh, wanted to uh, make drawings which maybe can evoke that feeling. It's all done uh, with a pencil. It's so great to see your work in a museum <laughs> with a lot of space. And until now, uh, my inspiration is the in eternal change of everything. I went back to uh, black and white and I used lines to make a surface because the, the wooliness, the vagueness of the other big drawings, it became too much for me. So I wanted to uh, have more clearness, but I didn't succeed. <laughs> it's still fake. This is done with a very thin uh, pen and inked, ink. So I took uh, the markers again to create more clear lines. And do you know the moiré pattern? Yes. No. Moiré pattern? Mo moiré. It's a French. Moiré. Um, you get it uh, when... Um, you let uh, lines interfere like this in all ways. Um, another textile like surface. This with an epoxy layer for more depth. more patterns. Then uh, color was uh, knocking on my door. And I, um, I kept on drawing uh, these moiré patterns. But again, maybe you read it, um, that everything turns into its opposite in the long run. So it became more vague again, a bit more clear, very clear. I used several surfaces, paper, wood. Now, uh, Selma, so yeah. I, I mean, you, 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 as you were in the, the previous section and talking about the vastness and the, and the void, uh, 
you know, most of the, most of what you showed us at least was, you know, pencil and gray and, and no mm -hmm. hard lines. Um, and, and I, I was taking notes of like how often you were using the, the, the grays and, and shades of blue. Uh, then you jumped into the more lay patterns and you yourself said, okay, and then it, color was introduced. Um, is, is that, be, could you talk about what, was it, was it something about the pattern? Was it that you needed to have more shades than just gray and blue to create the pattern? And, and how did the adding color, you know, change your feelings about the work? Uh, first, um, my choice is um, uh, I make them intuitively. So um, I use my intuition, but because of my education and uh, of course experience, um, I can, um, I can see if it works or not. And what I uh, needed was um, more cool and warm. Mm -hmm. And the grays, the cool and the warm grays were not enough for me anymore. So that's why I turned to, uh, towards color. They, they, these were uh, these were fan favorites here. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's again about turning uh, into the opposite in the long run, because the lines I felt the lines were yeah there was too much straightness. Mm -hmm. So I needed to do something. So I took the paint and the ink and I mixed and the, the acrylic medium. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did it in, in a few seconds and I thought, okay, I have to do it now, fully concentrated. And if I succeed, that's okay. If I don't succeed, it's okay also, but I won't change it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I use these few seconds and that's it. So this is it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the strange thing is, if, uh, I don't know if you recognize this, if I want to repeat it because I was successful, mm -hmm. then the first few works <laughs> don't succeed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, um, do you, do you think this, links uh and did it feel the same way of working with this kind of abstracted image and organic more organic water or liquid image kind of goes back to the to the pigment that you were putting on the plastic and that yeah. it dry and change as as uh you know as it i don't know found itself you know yes yeah i hardly manipulated this Mm -hmm. A little bit, but because I knew I would destroy it with too much uh, manipulation. Yeah, and it's the same, it's the same focus and concentration um, with, for instance, I don't uh, play golf, but I can imagine that playing golf um, you must have the same concentration as I have when I uh, let uh, the drops fall on the place which I think is the best place. Here the fluidity needed more lines, so I carefully put line after line until I intuitively, uh, my intuition said that it was enough. And what I find exciting is um, to come close to that uh, limit uh, after which I'm going to destroy it. So I want to be right at that place. I was, I was wondering while uh, making the other uh, 
uh, drawings and paintings. How many breaths does it take? Does it take? That's just a stupid question what, which comes into my mind. So I began to count the breath. And I was working only with these three colors and you can find it in your uh, printer. So these colors uh, are, are um, only made out of three. And I do not, um, I only put it on the paper and not, I do not mix it on forehand. <laughs> and after that, I needed more lines again. Uh, this one you were talking about? Yes. It's the one where the, the light, where you couldn't see it in the video we watched. Yeah. What, what is, I, I, are, are you gonna come back to the, to the breath? Or was that just a question or did breathing enter into the creation? Um, yeah, very simple. Okay. Just how, how many breaths uh, does it take to finish this drawing? So was it more about you just being aware of your uh, hyper awareness of the, the process? Or yeah. did you actually count? Or? Oh, yes, 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 I counted. Okay. Yeah. And do you see the difference? Yeah. It all depends on the light. And in this drawing, uh, it worked very well because uh, I used uh, a kind of, it was not pure white but it was a bit off-white. So here it looks a bit yellow. So it completely depends on from which direction uh, the light comes and where you are as a spectator. Well, More also, art. Yeah? I, I, I think this is such a nice culmination of, you know, on the interior busy, Busy the the diamond shapes, if you will. That's more of the of the harkens back to the uh, to the organic stick drawings and stuff that you did on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Then the just the overlapping of, of the the light goes to the you know the the bus stop kind of photograph that you you had used. Mm -hmm. uh, the the straight lines are very much like the architectural uh, drawings that you were you were doing. Mm -hmm. So how many breaths does it take? Ah, oh, that's so funny. Sometimes 50 and sometimes 400. Okay. It depends on the amount of layers uh, yeah. which are needed. Yeah. And it's funny. Um, I don't remember now at, uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, Robbie, do you use uh, titles? Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. 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 Because do you? Um, before I didn't, but uh, yes, I do. Okay. And sometimes titles come from outside. Yes. Uh, because when my partner uh, saw this uh, series, he thought, hey, that re reminds me of uh, visual flight rules. Okay. Do you guys know what it is, what it means? Is that like air traffic controllers making sure that planes don't collide? Um, if you um, uh, fly an aeroplane, and my partner uh, has been flying aeroplanes, small ones, okay. uh, then you visual flight rules means that you completely 100% rely on sight. So not on your instruments, only on sight. Okay. And this reminded him of uh, the small uh, sheep-like clouds, huh? which you can see uh, above land or above sea, above the earth. So my aim uh, was to uh, get uh, space, uh, the feeling of space uh, between um, this... Um, 
these uh, very harsh forms, shapes, and uh, the first few layers with ink. And he saw that, but he interpreted uh, it differently. So, so that was funny. So this series I called Visual Flight Rules. I think this could be the last one. I went back to very thin layers uh, of ink, only the three colors. And when the, my, my work was in the exhibition, um, I realized, because then I, I can see it from a distance, literally and uh, fig figuratively, uh, I thought, mm, I'm not yet ready with my lines. So I started again to um, draw layer upon layer with thin lines. And that's wh where I am now. And the rest is open. It's not special, especially that um, the work of an artist inspires me. Not always, but often also the attitude of an artist. This is Eva Hessa, also lines, and she works also with textile. Uh, do you pronounce pronounce Sol Lewit as Sol Lewit? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sol Lewit, uh, I love this drawing because it looks so simple. Do you know Agnes Martin? Yes. yes. Yeah. I am. I have a, mo a monograph, and I read that she said that the best answer and the only one who knows the answer uh, on your uh, what the composition should be or whatever is you. So I found that liberating. I don't have to uh, look and search outside myself. I didn't want to uh, copy, but I was shocked when I discovered this I, after my blue line drawings. Bryce Marden also uh, using lines. And what I like about him, he is still alive. I think he is about 89 that he is uh, always open to new possibilities. And that's a customer. <laughs> I'm, I've not been interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> was it not too long? Because it was not my intention, intention to finish this. Good. I mean, I can say that we, I, I was enjoying getting all of the, the, the treats of the visuals. Uh, one thing I know I'm curious about. I have a question. Yes. Um, do you get most of your inspiration from nature? Like water, like other stuff like that? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, I get inspiration uh, from daily life, um, but yes, being at sea, so not really seeing my surrounding, but experiencing, so experiencing um, the breathing of the ocean, because the waves of the ocean, uh, they are very long. So in a river, they can be um, nervous and at sea, they can be also. But uh, if you experience the, the breathing of the sea, then it goes very slowly, you go up and very slowly you go down. So that, that feeling I take um, in an unconscious way, I take it with me, yes. Did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
uh, what made you like get into sailing and um, also, I guess, to add on to that, um, what made you decide to start making art when you were sailing? Um, my uh, partner, my husband, he uh, learned it as a child and we were always working day and night and we thought we need uh, some time to um, relax. Sailing is not really relaxing. <laughs> and so we bought a very small, uh, this very small sailing boat and there the adventure uh, started. Uh, um, and once, like, did you just, like, know immediately that you uh, wanted to do art when you were sailing? Or, uh, <laughs> like, the first time that you went sailing, did you, uh, was that when you started making art on there, or did you? Uh... Um, yes, after the first year, I was very seasick. <laughs> um, but yes, um, already uh, after the first year. Um, but I saw also that uh, the experience uh, which I felt while being at sea was connected already to what I did already before. So it, mo it was more an aha feeling. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. so this is the place where it all happens for me at least. Do you have like a favorite place to travel? Like when you're sailing, do you ever go somewhere and spend time? Yeah, I always said uh, towards the south because it's warmer, but uh, the surroundings, the, the shapes of the islands in the north of Europe are also beautiful. But um, what I love the most is being at sea uh, while uh, seeing no land. So no land in sight. That's the best place and no other ships. And I don't know what your experience is. Uh, have you been at sea? Yeah, yeah, I've we're... never been like deep sea like you have. Like with no land in sight. I feel like I'd be scared to do that. You're very brave. Or lakes. Lake. We have we we uh we're in our the, our city is called Lake Charles. So we have we're we're a half a mile uh we're about 30 minutes from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh oh yeah. Uh-huh. We we are we are a very uh, uh water um surrounded area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I found it quite scary the first few years um, because the boat was very small and it, I had the feeling that um, I was in a small tin and could do nothing uh, to survive. So I was very scared in the beginning and now sometimes only. <laughs> so it was brought up um, that, uh, and, and it I was reminded of it when you brought up the Agnes Martin quote about relying on the self, and then your, you know, the, uh, I hadn't caught on to the to the uh, counting breaths, uh, and, and then just experiencing nature. But someone had brought up, and I was just wondering if you if you felt this. Uh, that when you're drawing at sea, when you were drawing at sea, that you were literally, and especially now when talking about just feeling the, the length of the waves, that you were almost giving of yourself to the waves by just being the vessel that made the mark, uh, as, as maybe you just put the whatever, whatever marking uh, instrument you were putting on the paper, that it would only move based on the length of, of, of the waves, you know, yeah. but it wouldn't have happened without you being there. So you, I guess you were like the intermediary. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that raised a question. Do you have a question? Oh, no. My, my, my question was, is that if that, you know, when you, were you, 
uh, especially when you can't see any land around you, then I imagine you have this great sense. You already smell, feel small, but yes. you have this great sense of smallness and you're at the complete mercy of the, yeah. of the elements. Yeah. Uh, is, is that, you know, you said it was fearful. Maybe now it's probably exciting. Uh, yeah. but do you prepare yourself if you know that you see some waves in the distance coming up? If you have a routine where, um, where there's more exciting times that are predictable that you know you're going to be making some good stuff because of the elements that you're in. Yeah. Um, Rein, uh, my partner, is very good in predicting uh, the weather uh, based, based on uh, models, of course. Uh -huh. um, so uh, if, um, if uh, the wind... Uh, it will be very strong we do not leave the harbor but yeah if it happens under the way yeah we have to uh, adapt mm -hmm. and uh, about uh, being intermediate uh, that raised a question um, because i thought hmm those lines um is it art And okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm sorry. What? Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so only those lines um, uh, which are made by the movements of the waves of the boat, mm -hmm. uh, of my pencil, mm -hmm. is it art? So it, are, you it, asking, are you asking them? Uh, I was asking myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is this still art and um i don't have the answer yet <laughs> yeah be because the only thing um what happened uh, was uh, reg registrating yeah and could that be art maybe you have an answer Well, I mean, I would say, I, I, I would say that yes, because it's, it's based on a lot of the intentionality. Yeah. You know? um, and I, I, I mean, even it's like, it's, it, it, it's like saying something is completely random, but nothing can be completely random. No, you know, there, there, nothing can be a hundred percent stream of consciousness because it's being filtered through you. And especially, especially with the history that you can point to in your work. I mean, it's not like you, know, you didn't decide to go mountain climbing and then pick up rocks and do, you know, this is like part of your, yeah. it's very well traceable to your, to your pattern. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it seems a very logical place for you to get based on. You know the, the the breathing and experience of of nature. You know, it seems even more true than photographing. Yeah, for at least yes, for me it is more. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Oh, is there like is it is your imagination? different i would say like compared to on land or on sea like is your imagination like more creative like on sea not by the surroundings good yeah. what, a good, question. what a good question about imagination because to be honest i don't think i have imagination <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, it's no joke. <laughs> are you Selma, are you are you that isolated that you don't recognize that what you 
Or you are dreaming. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't feel that I have control over it. <laughs> <laughs> well then, then then don't try and control it that's right this is yeah I, but uh, well i guess to get back to his question if we do you feel a difference in yourself in your creative output in c at c versus on land Yes, because um, I did a lot of uh, mountain climbing. See, I said, see, I was just making something up. If you just went mountain climbing and stuff, and you've done it all. All right. <laughs> and uh, yes, Be <laughs> <laughs> because for me, uh, being on land is more connected to daily life and being part of society even when I'm alone in the mountains, because there are animals which uh, I can see and at sea, yeah, you don't believe it. We hardly see any animals. So, yeah, and because nature in um, at sea is even more rough, maybe not in the jungle. I've been in South America in the jungle and their nature is also frightening but even but in the, in the jungle i i even feel i don't have um, uh, any control at all so i feel i have more control at sea now we are talking about this that's strange oh interesting your question is raising more questions Thank you. That's great. So uh, to answer your question, yes. <laughs> See, I feel, um, yeah, I'm more directly connected to nature and I forget myself. Uh -huh. And on land, I don't experience that. Yeah. Soma, we have... Uh... We have 90 seconds before our class is great. Great. What do you mean? Great. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> no, thank, thank, thank you. And I wanted to share a story uh, with them. It's something that, that struck, that, that stood out to me. Um, you know, I, I, I look at your work. We've been looking at your work. It's, it's, it's very, I find it to be very soothing, uh, relaxing, uh, particularly your interest in light. And um, Selma and I had some trouble connecting. We got our times mixed up and um, she was looking to talk to me and it was three o'clock in the morning here and I wasn't awake looking at it, but her message just said quite lovely. She, she instead of saying, are you mad? She said, I hope you are not grumpy. And I thought that was so beautifully put and it was so eloquent. Like it, it just worked with your work. Like nobody gets mad. Some people just sometimes get grumpy, but you get beyond the grumpiness and you wake up in a new place. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. And uh, whoops. I took lots of notes that I, I would like, I have questions I'd like to share and, and, and right. let's, let's, let's con continue please uh, in communicating. Great. It this was, I have to thank you because this is so valuable to me, the questions I get. Mm -hmm. So right. oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Yes. And please, when you get the video, send that, and then I'm going to send you some, some, some stuff and, and we'll be, in touch. Great. All right. Thank you so Great much. Great day. Thank you so much. Likewise. Bye bye. 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 Hey, bud. That's so much wrong. Hello.